All right, guys, let's keep going with the Orifice Blade Lab. Uh, and so last week, what we did was we got all this set up. Um, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna move on to the Venturi tube. The setup is exactly the same as what we just did last week. You're going to take out the, the orifice plate and you're gonna replace it with the Venturi tube. You'll find the same thing. You'll find an exponential increase in pressure and obviously voltage as you get more flow. Uh, but what I want you to do is I want you to, uh, to have the signal from the Venturi going into the computer. So I'm, I have the, the orifice plate still set up. So I'm gonna show you how to get that voltage. So right now we've got 1.1 volts on the meter there. How do we get that voltage to go into the computer and be displayed as the exact same voltage on the screen? So this could be like 500,000 feet away and this is displaying the exact same uh, voltage that's on the meter. And at this point it's reading five liters per minute, 5.2. So let's take a look at the rotometer here and you can see that we are at five liters as well so not only do we have the voltage going back we now have the exact flow that's happening and i mean that is baffling the fact that we have uh, a pressure difference happening here at the orifice plate or in your case the venturi tube going into the dp cell the dp cell amplifies that sends it out as either zero to five or four to twenty sends it out back to the controller. So this is our connections into the controller. So <clears throat> that goes into the computer and then the computer uh, shows us the exact same voltage and level. So how do we do that? Well, this is our reference for that voltage with the meter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a long lead and we're gonna bring that over to this point right here. We're gonna bring in into the analog inputs. Okay, make sure that the dip switch is at five volts. When everybody's bored, they start flicking switches. Make sure it's referencing zero to five volts. Now, I also have a jumper over here. So I'm gonna put a jumper from here to here. And we know that in parallel, this is in parallel now, voltages are the same. So I got zero to five volts coming back from the DP cell. That same voltage is being applied here. So now I can have one showing my flow and one showing my voltage. So that's what you're seeing right here on the screen. One is referencing flow, one is referencing voltage. If I wanted to have another signal coming in, I would just parallel up to the next input on the IO interface. Now, in order for that voltage to come in, watch this, if I take this uh, lead away from here, right now we're at one volt, and if we're looking at the screen there, hard to make out, let me just see. We got one volt. I'm gonna remove the jumper on the common and look what happened, we lost the signal there. So this wire right here is crucial as well. So between the IO interface and the 24 volts, they both see, need to see the same reference for the common. Otherwise, what you see in the screen is not gonna reflect what's happening in the field. One more time. One wire from the zero to five into the analog input, jump it over to the next one if you wanna have two uh, things on the screen, and then refer the 24 volt power supply to the same common, and you're ready to rock and roll. Okay, now that voltage is going into those two ports. So how do we get this to show flow and voltage here and reference the same two to nine liters per minute and zero to five out? Well, if we go over here to, what is it, setup, go down to configure your analog inputs, then as you scroll through, so I've labeled this orifice plate and venturi tube. So go, go through, see if it uh, looks like somebody set up a level lab here, temperature lab, analog inputs, and this one is referring to flow and voltage. So if this is not here, then create a new input setup with flow. Our max is nine liters per minute. Our min is two liters per minute. Put in your units, liters per minute and extract the square root. Remember that um, from that, D, that dB cell, we're getting an exponential increase. So we need to take the square root to give us a linear relationship between the flow and what this thing is actually reading. So by taking the square root, it'll take that exponential increase from the orifice plate and provide us with a linear voltage that goes to the computer. Then it'll tell us the exact flow that's going on. We're gonna keep this voltage the same, so it's gonna mirror the voltage. 
voltage, five volts max, zero as my min, and DC volts. Keep this not tagged. Go up to file, go to accept the, and return to the trainer. Come on. Yes. Excellent. And now we've got flow from zero, sorry, from two to nine liters per minute. And our voltage from zero to five. And what's awesome is now it'll directly reflect what's going on out in the field. So what I'll do is um, I will increase the, the flow here. Zoom in here. So let's go up to six liters per minute. Okay. The voltage on the meter is 1.87. Ah, uh, yes, 1.87. Now it's moving all over the map. Um, because if you look at the float, you can see that the float is actually moving itself. As the float moves, then obviously the pressure is going to change. That's because we don't have a nice straight, like if we had 10 times our diameter then, um, we would have a nice straight piece here, right? So if we doubled or tripled that straight piece, the flow profile would be better before it hit the orifice plate. But it's the best we're going to do. So. 1.86, 1.87, that's being reflected here. So the exact same voltage is right here on the screen. And it says we're at six liters per minute. Gorgeous, six liters per minute. So now if I increase this to uh, seven, down a bit here, beauty, seven liters per minute, gorgeous. 7 point. Looks like I'm consistently off by 0.2, so I could go back and calibrate and try and get this a little bit better. But 7.2, that's awesome for this lab. And we got 2.8 volts, 2.9 volts. Gorgeous. So everything that's out in the field is now being shown on the screen. Mint, you have now set up a flow uh, system with a feedback loop going into the computer. The orifice plate, or in your case, the Venturi tube, goes into the high and low pressure ports. So high and low pressure ports go into the high and low pressure ports on the DP cell. Uh, you can see that there is a higher pressure on the inlet, virtually nothing on the outlet, but a lower pressure on the outlet. And then that pressure is being standardized into either a four to 20 milliamp cur current or a zero to five, going back to the controller. And we're seeing that level right here. If I increase now to uh, eight meters, Gorgeous, I'm consistently off by 0.2, but that's good. And my meter behind me is reading 3.91, and this guy is bouncing around that value as well. Awesome. Now the next step, taking the computer and now controlling that flow, that's a lot harder. I don't know if it's a lot harder, but we've done the bulk of the work here doing the calibration and setup. Now in order to have the computer take over, you can't just go over and hit automatic and have the computer take over and say I wanted a 50% of the flow. We have to then put in our proportional integral and derivative, so our PIDs. So if you want a background on PIDs, the video on the level lab and the subsequent PID control of the level lab uh, shows you good control. That's what you're going to be doing in advance. Uh, really good control over ha taking that feedback signal and then having the computer take over and keeping the flow or the level of the pressure the same. But now, in order for this computer to now control this setup now, we now have to put in some parameters for proportional, integral, and derivative. So we've only done half the battle. But that will be in, a, in the next uh, video. So far, this is awesome. If you've got this set up, and you've got this to mimic on the computer screen exactly what's going on here in your trainer, awesome, so good. All right guys, thanks for your patience.